Hey guys, David from Unqualified Critics back with you. And if you recall from the Burger Time videos, I did some research and I found a switchable gate that can be switched between four way and eight way from above the control panel. How does that work? Well, you use this as the restrictor gate. You can see there are magnets that help this rotating gate lock in place. And then this key goes on the bottom of the joystick so that it fits inside underneath this. And when you twist the joystick, you rotate the whole contraption and now you've got a four way stick. Only problem with it is I built this and then tried it on the Burger Time cabinet. And the Burger Time cabinet comes with a particular set of Sanwa clone sticks that this gate that this gate simply does not fit. So today we're gonna to try it on actual Sanwa sticks and see if it works there and see if that's our solution. Here's everything you need. The 3D printed restrictor gates, which I'll put a link below, which you can print yourself or order from a 3D printing shop. Three millimeter magnets, I'll also put a link below. And some strong glue. And great news, the four-way, eight-way switchable 3D printed restrictor grate fits perfectly on genuine sandlot sticks. Unfortunately, the Burger Time cabinet does not come with genuine sandlot sticks. So if you want this to work for Burger Time, you're gonna be stuck getting four of these, which is about 30 bucks if you're paying to have them printed. And you're gonna be stuck getting four sandlot sticks, which is about 80, $85. Not exactly a budget solution. This would have worked a lot better if it happened to fit the sticks it came with, but it didn't. But as you can see, this can now be easily switched. I still have to add the key component in here. I'm not gonna bother doing that since I'm ultimately not gonna use that on this joystick. This is the marble cabinet after all, and it's permanently set to eight-way octagonal gates on my cabinet. There'd be no reason to ever switch it to four-way, so I'm just not gonna go through that hassle. But as I said, I do have a genuine Sanwa stick uh, being shipped that I'm gonna install in my burger time. And then there, we finally should have the holy grail of easily switchable four-way and eight-way sticks so we can finally play the games that came on that cabinet the way they were designed to be played. Now that we know that these gates do work on Sanwa sticks, we know that this can be applied to Arcade 1UP. It's just a matter of getting the right sticks there. But if you're using an At Games Legends Ultimate or any other kind of home arcade solution and you want to be able to switch your gates and this is going to apply to you. And if you've got burger time, then you're gonna to have to order the real sticks and wait for those to come. But in the meantime, how do we get all of these parts into this so it's switchable? First, you take the gram. You stick the chocolate on the gram. Then you roast the mallow. I want to say it's simple and it is simple once you know how to do it, but the directions available online are not particularly well written. I want to stress that this isn't an actual product that some company has made and manufactured. This is a part that some guy invented out of a need to be able to switch his gate from four way to eight way and then has provided the 3D printing plans to the public for anybody else who wants to do this. And it is a pretty good solution. So let's break down everything you need to make this work. Obviously you need these parts and the 3D printing plans call for this. Again, link below, you can have this printed up. You do want these little three by six millimeter magnets. Put a link below. You want a strong glue. I recommend this. It's pretty thin, it's easy to apply in these tiny little holes and gaps where you're gonna need to apply it. You're gonna want a pair of tweezers. And I recommend using a marker so that you can mark the tops of the magnets. This gate represents a failed experiment on my end. The trick is when you get the magnets down into their slot, they have a tendency to want to flip around and they both have to be facing the exact same direction for their polarity so that it matches when this magnet slides between them, both of these magnets have to work the same. But once you have one magnet in, that magnet's gonna to start to pull on the second magnet 
and that's where you're gonna cause issues. So if you see, I just took a marker and wrote T on it, and I knew if I set it down in the slot, if I, that T was no longer visible, then it had flipped upside down. It happens so fast, you can't really see it with your eye, but once you've got it marked, you're good. So this is useless now, but that's okay. That would be another thing I would say, when you get these printed, if you don't print them yourself, order multiple iterations of it. Have, if you need four of these printed, print five of them. The extra one doesn't cost you very much money, and odds are you might mess something up when you put this stuff together. All right, so this is the chassis for the restrictor gate. This is the actual restrictor piece and it's switchable. Put it underneath so that this little slot fits in. Simple enough. This piece holds the magnet. So you're gonna slot this into the restrictor gate and it'll be able to slide back and forth. Now again, the directions don't enumerate this, but you are going to want to use some glue here. So let's go ahead and glue this out. This part's pretty easy. If you're using Gorilla Glue, make sure you shake it. You really just need a tiny bit of glue. You don't want to use too much. Take that slot. Hold it in place for 45 seconds. And you're good. So now we have the foundation. We just need to add the magnets. And again, that's the toughest part because it's so easy to get this part wrong. These magnets are tiny. They like to go flying. That's why we have our tweezers. Put a small dab of glue down in the slot. You will get some of this glue on your hands, but it's not a big deal. It'll wear off in the next day or two. Now this first one, it doesn't matter which way it's facing because we're just gonna balance everything else around it. So as that dries, now's the challenging part. This is the part that's pretty easy to screw up. The next magnet has to face. So how are we gonna do that? Well, first we need to make sure that's fully dried because we're gonna put some force on it. We're gonna take the next magnet, drop it on top of there, and the side facing top now is the side that'll need to be facing top once it's installed. So very simple logic, just a matter of executing it correctly. This is where these boys come in handy. You just wanna be really gentle when pushing this in. All right, so now we have the tops appropriately both inserted. So there's one last magnet we have to mess with, and it's going to be getting the magnet placed inside this slot so that it can switch, just like our fully assembled unit. All right, as usual, we need to make sure we mark the top. So that's easy enough. Whatever way it falls on it is gonna be the right way. Now I've gotta peel this thing off without pulling out the original. I didn't have this much trouble the first one I did. I think I'm using a little too much glue. Jeez. 
Let's see if the marking survived, yep. So let's set these aside. So that they don't distract from this magnet. And you have the top facing in like so. If you slot the magnet in, it basically stays. So now it's just a matter of applying glue to the outside of it. All right, let's test it out. Yep, slides just fine. All right, well, these are assembled. And then you can see how this key which slots in where the E-ring normally goes on the bottom of the joystick. And then once it's in place, you can turn the joystick and it'll rotate. Normally this will hang just slightly outside of this gate. So the key is you gotta line it up and then pull the joystick up and then rotate. Now how easy or hard that is to do, I don't know how hard that is to get it lined up when you're not looking at it. The guy who invented this demoed it on video, made it look pretty easy, so I'm hopeful. But as I said, I'm gonna have to get the right joysticks for burger time before I mess with that. So that'll be on the next video. And honestly, I'm pretty annoyed at this entire thing. We really shouldn't have to do any of this. Burger time should have either come with four-way or eight-way games or should have come with a solution like this already installed. It's kind of fun messing around with it and searching for a solution. It'll be satisfying once this is all in place, assuming it all works. But it's a little bit much. I mean, the cabinet's already 400 bucks. And by the time I add all this stuff and swap out the joysticks, I mean, I'm gonna be in for a lot of cash. So your mileage may vary. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time. Dripping lights, paint the sky.